Reports from Anand Tech, particularly who have had some hands-on time with the device, suggest that the performance has dropped by about 2 to 3 percent when you compare it to past generations. Uh, this is done probably as a trade-off to increase the battery life. So what would you like to no, say? So fourth generation core is actually 15 percent generation or generation improvement in performance. So fourth generation over the third generation is around 15 percent. If you compare to say a three-year-old platform, it's around 35 percent uh, improvement generation. Uh, Sorry, third, third generation, fourth generation versus first generation. Yeah. Um, so you're saying that when you come to maybe the ULV processors uh, from Haswell, uh, they will not showcase a drop in performance when compared to the previous generation ULVs, yeah, so, yeah. just to compromise for the battery life. You to increase need to make sure that you're comparing ULV to ULV. Yeah, right? ULV to ULV. Absolutely. Performance improvement, graphics and raw performance, and obviously battery life. Yeah. All right. Um, so apart from this, for example, like we've only seen the MacBook Airs come out right now, other generation devices from Acer and all that you've showcased. Uh, how are you looking at probably a distinction between the traditional Ultrabooks without touchscreens and devices that are going all touchscreen? And, um, you know, how do you think that these changes are going to affect the Ultrabook consumer since Ultrabook was a concept that was started by Intel, like ultra thin and stuff like that. So in the next generation, are you seeing that touch is going to definitely take over and your two-in-ones are going to be the future of what Ultrabooks okay. are? It's kind of two elements there. One is just touch specifically. Yeah. Uh, we've already seen the waterfalling of touch right down the stack. I mean, we're seeing like more than 50% of the designs coming out of Taiwan and China, Korea, where the bulk of these designs are getting manufactured, uh, are already touch enabled. Uh, Ultrabooks, for fourth generation core, every single design, 100% of Ultrabooks will be touch enabled. So this is part of just, you know, A, driving the design as, as the general uh, consumer base gets used to using Touch 1. And secondly, the cost of Touch is drastically starting to reduce to the point that it's becoming a norm in terms of part of the designs that are coming up. The vision of the all-in-one adaptive, today what you saw was one interface and that was Touch. Uh, we are right now working on multiple interfaces around the edge of these devices, My, uh, jewelry microphones around the edge of these devices, cameras, 3D cameras for gesture. Because ultimately where we're heading with this is multiple users at once, multiple interfaces, one device. The example that we use a lot of is the child at school, that, oh, sorry, the child at home in the morning where he's doing his homework on the device, the mother can walk past and speak to the device and another child can gesture to the one device all at once. This is the vision that we're really driving the adaptive desktop. It's taking the desk out of the desktop and it's really becoming a new usage model. But let's um, hear from some of the companies that are actually creating these experiences uh, for the all-in-one and that ecosystem. Please, uh, please run the video. I am the partner and co-founder of SpongeBob Interactive, and we are a educational gaming company. We produce um, games for different organizations. It's very much with a science and healthcare focus. There's some really exciting things that have opened up uh, simply because you can touch. One of our most most popular games is called Build a Body. Users actually assemble bodies from their bits and pieces, and once they've done that, things start to go wrong with your bodies, and you've got to figure out how to fix it. When we moved into devices that had a touchscreen interface, it changed the whole framework of how the device worked. We are in the final phases of producing a version of Build a Body just for AIOs that allows multi-touch and allows multi-user collaboration around a single device so that we can build together. What I really love with the AIOs is, of course, the processing power behind them. We can actually build more sophisticated applications, but when you lay it down, we open up this world of collaboration around our applications. Omnivision Studio is, uh, is located in the Netherlands and is specialized in the development of multi-touch applications. I've been working already for 23 years with touch screens, but this Intel fourth generation really is going to change and even changed already our business. I'm really excited about the fact that these portable uh, adaptive home ones can be laid flat and that they can be carried around in our living rooms, in our classrooms, and even in our bedrooms. And that um, our applications now can be really used by up to four people. And that's great. I believe that Intel 4th generation will bring us more products, portable other ones with bigger screens and longer battery life.
And that gives us, as a multi-touch application developer, lots of opportunities to develop applications for education, entertainment and business. Nomad was founded as a partnership between myself and my partner who has his background in high-level game design for consoles. Mike came to me to, to uh, put our games and give it a shot making games for, for the new mobile revolution. So we started working nights. Some friends joined us and that's where Awesome was created. Awesome Frenzy is essentially a two-player version of the, the popular Awesome single-player mobile game. That's one of the reasons we say that uh, if, if Tetris and Sudoku had a baby, it would be awesome. The Intel relationship is not an absolute dream for us. The all-in-one platform and the fact that, hey, we're talking about multiplayer now on a large screen where you can actually play with two or three other people sitting on the same device in the same room, almost like a family game night, but now with incorporating technology. I mean, the ability to take a 20-inch desktop and walk around your house with it is crazy. You don't have to be plugged in. The Hoswell chips use are so low power that you actually have desktops with a battery life. That blows my mind. If you talk about standby power, so a few things here. We're talking here about closing the lid and what used to be four and a half days is now 10 to 13 days. Now remember that standby power. That's not that we close the lid and nothing's happening. That is, every so often it wakes itself up, goes out to the net, bring, or email or whatever, brings down the latest data, updates your system, and puts itself back to sleep automatically. Now that capability, by the way, when you look in the tablet and phone world, they actually measure the speed at which it can do that very accurately as a measure for the efficiency of the product to manage battery life. And the reason is, is because you want to be able to do the job very fast and then quickly get it back down to idle. And that's exactly what's happening here, why you can see these drastic improvements on standby power. But one of the key things, of course, as we go to these two-in-one form factors is that device now is going to be really used not just for the traditional clamshell productivity applications, but more and more for more tablet-oriented usage models. Watching high-def video is just one of the many key usage models of such a device. You can see some of the data here going from six hours to over nine, nearly ten hours of active high def video uh, watching and consumption, if you will, uh, for such a device. So, um, I've talked about some of the form factors and what we're doing around shrinking and creating these two in ones. I've talked about battery life, but that's two of the three elements that we want. We want it all, and we don't want to make any compromise. So, the next two is around performance and graphics. Let's take a look at this. We're going to firstly talk a little bit about graphics, and as part of fourth generation core, <coughs> We introduced the Iris and the Iris Pro graphics capability embedded into the fourth generation platform. Now since 2006, we've improved the graphics performance on the core base platform 75 times. So it's not 75%, it's 7,500% since 2006. Even since just one year ago when we launched the third generation core, the graphics has doubled, 200% improvement. So, um, and it's not just pure raw performance, it's new capabilities. For example, uh, 4K support for 4K monitors uh, natively supports that. It supports uh, three screen collages, etc. And again, increasingly a device like this is used in a tablet mode where we're taking video and the speed to actually transcode that video into a format that we would share it up to Facebook, etc. The speed at which it does that is better. And I think if you go up to the expo later, you can see some of those demos running live. But I want to show you some uh, video for a second here. Maybe you can run the first video and I'll explain it as it's uh, showing. So what you have here is two separate systems. On the left is uh, the same system on the right from a microprocessor perspective, but on the left is using an NVIDIA card, discrete card if you will. And on the right is just purely native what's embedded in the microprocessor. Now there's a few points here. Um, you're probably looking at this and saying, I can't, I can't really pick any difference. Well, that's the point. The card on the left is between $70 and $100, depending on which country you're in, to add that card into the system. Whereas on the right, it's coming native, embedded in the microprocessor. Now, that's one thing, it's the cost. 
The other thing though, as we start to get into these kinds of form factors, the card on the left, that discrete card, runs at 50 watts. It simply is not an option to generate that kind of graphics with a discrete card when you want to get into these kind of form factors. So we're really wanting to have this quality of graphics, but shrink it down and support the direction towards these kind of The fourth generation core is exploding the opportunities for designing different products, form factors, IDs, out of the fourth generation core. Um, there's more innovation that we've seen, uh, particularly uh, not just here in India, but Taiwan and Korea and China, where a lot of these designs are being built and manufactured than we have seen in the past decade. And we don't think that innovation will ever be the same again as a function of what we're creating in the core roadmap, starting with fourth generation core. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. The impact is so great that the lines of how we categorize computing are getting really blurry now. And Intel's been driving this not just in the, uh, if you will, the core roadmap, but we've also been driving this in the tablet and phone roadmap. It's hard now to work out what is a tablet and what is a phone. And that same blurriness is now happening between compute and the tablet. And it is happening in that, <clears throat> for example, it's not just that the industry here today with all the OEMs that are represented here today, and thank you for coming today and being part of our launch, uh, but we're also seeing it in ancillary industries being changed as a function of these products that are now transcending categories. For example, the analysts today, when they're trying to count and size the market, for tablets, and phones, and notebooks, and desktops, etc. The method they've used that in the past is really being shaken because these products now sit between, if you will, and across these multiple categories. If you go to the retail industry, the way that they've been assorting the shelf with these different devices and what they've done for the past decade is really being broken down because these products now, as I say, transcend these categories. And we're seeing that truly happen as a function of fourth generation core more and more as multiple categories come together into single devices. Now that whole momentum and that trend is not something that is unique just to the mobile platform. In fact, more than anything or more than any other architecture we've built at Intel has the potential to take the desk out of desktop and it will move the richness of the desktop compute off the desk, whether it's onto the floor, into the study, into the family room, and it'll remove the constraint of the desktop computer, which was always one user to one device, to multiple users to one device, and liberate really a whole wave of new usage models that we can use the desktop for. And in fact, it's not just the benefit to the user, but also again we're seeing whole new industry spawned off this innovation. And we're going to show you some videos soon, the content and the media industry transforming as they see these new capabilities and devices come to market. There's more transistors in a single uh, core package than there are people in India. There's 1.4 billion transistors on a package. There's 3,000 people it took to create that product. It's about 450,000 transistors per engineer, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but uh, we've built in a whole number of new instructions, uh, new microarchitecture, but where does this ultimately all lead us? What is the benefit that this all brings together? Well, for us, we like to cat categorize it as the dawn of the true two-in-one. It is truly a notebook when you need it, and it's a tablet when you want it. For the last 20 years, our industry that we're all part of, in terms of any designer that was building or designing products in this field, was constrained by the fact that the microprocessor had to sit underneath the keyboard. And as a function of that, the design constraint was always, if you will, in this clamshell orientation. For the past two decades, notebooks essentially have been in this design orientation of a clamshell. As we start to ramp down 
the thermal design points and the wattage is much lower and lower and lower in this capability, in this fourth generation core capability, is we then blow apart that constraint of having the microprocessor sit underneath the keyboard, but rather we can start to put it behind the screen. And in an instant, and it was like that, I remember being in the meetings with the ODMs where we first released what we were doing. Remember that we tore up the roadmap back in 2011 to start building a roadmap specifically for today to create a product that was purpose built from the ground up for the Ultrabook. And it was at that point in those meetings that the lights went on and they saw the breadth of innovation, the scale that you could apply this product was on a magnitude that we had never seen before. Because we were no longer constrained, if you will, just to the clamshell orientation. So I want to show you a few things here. Um, there are many uh, different designs that are being worked on. Uh, this is just uh, one example, but you can get an idea of the, of the uh, Z height, the thickness, if you will, when you start attaching some of these designs of what you can actually create. This is not just a tablet with a notebook. It's the best of tablet and the best of notebook coming together. This is just one example of a design. We've, have, we've been running now in Taiwan Ultrabook Symposiums for three years. We have another one next month. We're doing a lot of work on the hinge technology that really facilitates, we've been studying the process for a user to transform from productivity usage model into consumption usage model. And the simplicity of that transition in the usage model dictates a lot to how well the user adopts the use of two in one. So this is another example um, whereby it just slides into, um, into uh, the tablet mode, if you will, and then when you want to go back to uh, the desktop mode, you can. And again, you can see the Z height and the thickness that these are coming down to. Now, in these modes, when we start getting into uh, a true tablet orientation and capability, we then really start to attract a number of the innovations we've seen grow up in the tablet. It's been, what would you say, somewhat difficult to adopt a lot of the sensors into the form factor in a clamshell mode. But as you get into tablet, we absolutely begin to really adopt and see the usage of sensors in the system. Proximity sensors, light sensors, gyrometers, accelerometers, 3D cameras, voice, dual array microphones for voice, etc. And more and more, you'll see, as I say, the best of the tablet come into the best of the PC and coming together in the true two-in-one. Even simple things like the adoption that really started in the phone of things like stylus getting adopted into a platform like this, all of it coming together into one platform. Um, now, we, uh, we commonly think on two-in-one as predominantly being a Windows, if you will, world. Well, more and more you're finding that all of the OEMs are experimenting with also having multiple operating systems on the one design. In fact, this design I'm holding right now, you would have saw launched this week, that also has an Android and Windows 8 orientation on the same platform. So while you're in this mode, in the Windows 8 mode, etc., doing more, uh, if you will, productivity applications, when I flip down into the tablet mode, it flips to Android, and then you're driving more consumption-based usage models. So um, <clears throat> this is another example. This is the Toshiba example. Uh, this is, now this is a detachable, but it just flicks off. And again, um, one of the uh, key um, design parameters we're seeing increasingly being looked at with these two-in-one designs, and in fact, frankly, just tablets per se, it's not just that it performs and has battery life and great screen graphics performance, etc. 80% of the time that tablets are held by a consumer, or, or used I should say, they're actually used with two hands. One hand to hold it, and the other hand to operate it. And what we find actually is that usually the back of the device is rested on another part of the body, usually the laptop. And one of the key design criteria increasingly coming out with these designs is the skin temperature of these designs. And it's one thing to produce all of this goodness, this thinness, this battery life, this performance. But when you're resting it on a part of the body, clearly skin temperature and coolness, right, is a key factor. 
that's coming up in these designs. We're seeing that increasingly come up in the design guidelines for the products on the market. Maybe I'll just leave that there. We, uh, we studied um, what people, users, why they prefer a two-in-one versus multiple devices. So you've got one bag, you've got two devices in there, you've got the weight, the cost of two devices, et cetera, et cetera. There's about 20 different pr preferences, reasons of preference that we found out. The top four were all to do with, if you will, the ID and portability. Portable was 31% was a preference for portable, 22% for ease of use, 24% was screen size, which is interesting. In a world of tablets of seven inch and 10 inch uh, tablets, there is a real interest when you actually bring these two devices together and you give people the experience of a tablet in 11, 13 inch screen size, it's interesting to note that it's hard for them to put it down after they start to get used to a tablet with that type of screen size. Now, how do we get there? How do we create this two-in-one environment? Well, it began with lowering the power. Before the Ultrabook, we were generating 35 watts for a core-based platform, notebook, etc. On average, the industry was producing notebooks one and a quarter to one and a half inches in thickness. And what we've been doing since then is really halving it. As we announced the Ultrabook in 2011, we halved it to 70 watts. And then here we are in 2013, we would more than halve that again. And that is the essence of shrinking the thickness down to these cool new IDs at the same time, creating this battery life, which is so extended. 